So thank you for coming. Happy New Year. I apologize for having to cancel this morning because I always like to see you guys um, in person. Uh, so I appreciate all of you taking the time to be with me tonight. We're going to start off with um, a prayer that comes from uh, one of our favorites and some uh, uh, a saint that we kind of think about when we think about reconciliation and love, and that's St. Francis. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. So tonight is one of the most difficult parts. Um, being Catholic and teaching second graders about the sacrament, um, which is the sacrament of reconciliation. Because let's face it, who likes to be called out on not being a good person? And that's what we equate the sacrament of reconciliation um, with, right? Is all the things that we've done wrong. Um, when in fact, hopefully after tonight, you're going to see that it's really, it's a, 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 it's a sacrament of love. It's a sacrament of love and forgiveness and trying to be a person of love and forgiveness in a world that is becoming increasingly day by day, a world of holding grudges and being mean and being mean. Oh my goodness, especially in the world of social media, like, boy, oh boy, some people just, like you could say, I have on a blue sweater today and 25 people can't wait to tell you, well, it's not blue, it's teal or it's peacock or it's like, you just, you can't say anything without someone jumping down your throat. And we're called as Catholics to be a person that just says, okay, and turn the other cheek and be the better person. Um, and sometimes that's not an easy thing to do. And in the sacrament of, of reconciliation, um, we can kind of be helped with that. So I want you to think for a minute. Um, how do you teach your children about forgiveness? If you were asked why Catholics confess their sins to a priest, what would you tell them? If your child asked you, why do I have to confess my sins to a priest? What would you say? So I want you to think about it for a second. And then we are going to break out into rooms. And I want you to now... It's no fun talking to just names, but if you want to say it with your names, you can. But when you're in the breakout rooms, um, I'm going to ask you at least to unmute so that you guys can talk to each other. And then when we come back together, I'll ask you guys to all mute. Um, okay, so what do you tell your children about forgiveness? Why do you have to tell you... So, so a priest, and what do you tell your children? 
if they ask you why. All right, so I'm going to give you guys, though it's going to be about five or six of you per room, and I'm going to give you guys about five minutes to talk about it, then we'll come together and talk about it together. means to you okay let's hear what reconciliation means what did i say about reconciliation <laughs> i i literally just said it again in front of you in the group um i forgot oh you forgot how Can about you tell your sins oh yeah uh -huh. where you where there's like a little room um uh, mm -hmm. And there's a priest inside there, and you tell him all your sins. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, if you know the Hail Mary and the Our Father, uh, he, oh, you have to idea. say them. You have to say them, and then, uh, and then, they, and then he forgives your sins. Very nice. Hi. Good job, Gabby. <laughs> And awesome. then it's almost yeah. like you're starting over again. So oh, yeah. why it's when so low. Here, are you want an earpiece? Forgiven, hmm? You want an earpiece? When your sins are forgiven, Therefore, it's almost right. like Ash Wednesday. You're starting oh, new. So right. you don't you try not to make the same mistakes again. To be just like Jesus would want you to be, right? Yeah. Very good, Gabby. Excellent. Yeah. So it's that was a pretty good summation of 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 what it is, right? Tonight we're gonna go into how the importance of of why though that we we tell our sins to a priest and, and why it's not just enough to um just enough to be sorry because we know right that God loves us unconditionally and God loves us all the time and yet we're still called um we still go it's called to go to the sacrament of reconciliation so we're going to do a little poll here and it's a poll so no one knows um what you what answer you're picking and it's a workshop on reconciliation so it's kind of not cool if you lie so let's be honest about, about our answers. So I want to know, we want to know collectively, how long has it been since your last confession? And be honest, because it's not fun if you're not honest. <laughs> Louise, it's Justine. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? I wanted to share something with you, and I, I just sure. thought it was interesting and completely being honest here. Um, recently, when Leah had to go for you know reconciliation, she's like, "Well, Mom, when was the last time you went?" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, I had to do the math, and I'm no mathematician, but um, <laughs> I figured it out to be 28 years." Oh wow! And so okay. I said, yep. So I said, "Well." She's right. I haven't done it. So I went in there and bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been 28 years. But, um, you know, in going in there, it was kind of interesting what he said. He said to look at, you know, reconciliation, coming to confession as a tool. He said a long time ago, it got such a bad rap because if you That's didn't right. go, it was like you were damned to hell and this whole thing. Um, and it was so nice to just go in there. It was really more like a conversation, you Absolutely. know, um, and, you know, and again, haven't gone in 20, 28 years, um, but it, he's like, you know, he wants to, that should change that thinking about it, that it should be looked at more of like a tool, you know, yeah. in life, we all have tools in different aspects of life and reconciliation should be looked at 
as a tool for, you know, That's for helping us through our faith. And I just wanted to share that because, um, you know, when he said that, it, it kind of just kind of opened my eyes to like what it, it really should be. We have such, we have such a, a bad connotation of it. And again, it's because we, we look at this, we look at the sacrament of, of, of all of our wrongdoings, right? Of how we've let God down, how we've let ourselves down. And it's so much more than that. It, it is, it's, it's a, it's a tool, right? To kind of open our hearts, like, like Gia and, and Nicole was saying, right? It's a, it's that clean slate. God doesn't, God doesn't want us to live unhappy lives. God wants us to be joyful. If we're carrying anything heavy in our hearts, then we can't be joyful. We we just can't. If you're holding on to things, whether it's guilt or 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 resentment or um anger, whatever it is, those are the things that we can bring to the sacrament to kind of clear the way for us because God God is with us always, but how can we see the presence of God when we're preoccupied with other things that keep us from experiencing God's joy? Okay, so eight of you guys did not respond. I know one of you is driving, so you don't have to respond, but... Um, so 30%, so it, it, it's no, right. It, it's not a shock. It's not, certainly not a shock to me. I'm doing this. Um, well, I'm doing second grade, you know, 26 years as the director, but you know, over 30 years I'm doing, you know, I'm doing a teaching about the sacrament. It does not surprise me that over 30%, right. The largest amount of you it's been five to 10 years or probably even um, longer than that. I'll be honest, um, right? So I'll be honest with you guys. I received, um, I received my first, you know, confession. And back when I was little, you had to go every week. I went every week or you couldn't receive communion. Um, one of my first sins was always, um, I I lied because I was going to lie in the confessional. Uh, you know how much did I have to confess it at at nine years old when I went every single week? Like, I wasn't I, I was a pretty good kid. So, um, but then I didn't go. For, for a really long time. It just wasn't, um, and it was like Justine, it was my first, my, you know, my first child was getting ready to um, receive his first reconciliation. And um, at that time, we just all sat in the church and we'd go up and they, everyone would just go up. You know, when there was a priest available, you'd go up and, my son looked at me and he said, mom, why don't you go? And I said, oh, no, no, no. Everyone is, there's no priest available. And he said, no, mom, look, right in the front, there's a priest available. And so, I, oh my gosh, I, you know, I went up and the very, first, what did I do? You know, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Uh, it's been at least... At least I said, I'm starting off, I'm lying. It's been at least 10 years <laughs> since my last confession. I figured that was maybe a lie about mission. It wasn't exactly, um, you know, you know, and he started laughing. And then I just like, a, dip, dip, dip. and he was so sweet. Because after every single thing that I said, he, he also knew me. He kept going. You and every other mom in three village. You and every other mom in three village. So, I mean, I felt, 
you know, I, I, I felt good, but then, you know, at the end of it, I felt, I mean, I felt so good. And then he said, make sure it's not another 10 years since your next confession. But what I found was, you know, and then let's face it, you got that first one done. Justine, the next time you go, it's not going to be 28 years. I hope not, Luis. Right? <laughs> well, hopefully, right? Hopefully, after tonight, you guys are going to want to go when when your child goes. Because they know the most, of, for most of you guys, it may be 28 years. And their, their understanding of that. But then it's not so bad. Like, even to say, it's been one or two years since my last confession. Not as bad as to say, not that it's bad, just not as bad for us to, to say, um, you know, oh, it's been, because again, we are not ever going to bring anything to the sacrament they haven't already heard. We're just not. So, you know, there are, there are people older than us that go that haven't received since their first time and they and, and they understand that um god is merciful and loving and just and we're sinners we're sinners the priest that we're telling our sins to is a sinner like we're sinners because we're human um we were created good, um, but we have sinned. We do sin. We're going to continue to sin no matter how hard we try because we're human. But God loved us so much. He sent us his son to learn how we're supposed to live. Um, and that's to live that loving and forgiving life. So the sacrament is not only so much about us bringing what we've done wrong and what we've done that needs to be forgiven as much as it is for us to bring the things that we can't forgive to the sacrament. And I'm going to go into more of that um, in a little bit because I, I feel like that's even more important for us. Um, God is, is, is loving and merciful and is just waiting for us to, to bring our, our hurts, um, and our burdens to him in the sacrament. His love is more powerful than anything that we could do or that our child could do. Um, we respond to that love by, by bringing ourselves to him and, you know, in doing penance for for um, what we've done in in whatever way. Sometimes it's an easy. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes um, it's not. But ultimately, God gives us grace through that sacrament to help us to conquer the things that we have trouble doing. So I'm going to show you a quick. Um, before I show you a quick video, I just want to go over. Um, the history of of reconciliation and how and how it kind of evolved because I think that's a, it's that's real important in understanding what the sacrament is. So at the beginning, right? So so God sends God sends Jesus to show the world that He loves us and He forgives us. Jesus dies. Remember, so Jesus dies for our sins. Jesus dies to save us. So Jesus is it, right? So Jesus dies, he rises, he walks, he walks the earth, goes back to be with God. And now people are trying to, right? So now people are, are, right? The Christians are forming and they're trying to be followers of Jesus. So now when people are, people are doing things wrong, right? They're publicly scrutinized so the beginning is a public penance for the so for the, 
for the first, so like for so from the second through the fifth centuries, as religion is organizing itself, sin is understood as an affront to the community. So it's not only an action to a person or an action from you, but it's viewed as an action that affects the entire community. So serious sins means that you're excommunicated from the church. So a public scandal means that's it. You are kick, you're kicked out from the Christian community. Lesser sins are taken care of through prayer and reconciliation through the Eucharist. So the community is very much taking care of the sinner in in the smaller in the smaller sins. So serious scandal though, um renouncing your religion murder, adultery um, can only be reconciled and communion restored after years of public penance. So think of, think of the story, the scarlet letter, right? That adulterer has to wear that, wear that a- That's nice. Years. Hold on. Three years. Um, the sixth, <laughs> Through the 11th centuries, now we have what's called a terrified penance. So sin becomes a private matter with an understanding, right, that, that evolved through Celtic monasteries. Um, so it started in Europe by Irish monks um, who weren't necessarily clergy, but they listened to people, people would come to them with their wrongdoings, and every sin had a penance. So every act had a consequence. From the 12th century through Vatican II. So the 12th century through like the early 60s. The sacrament became confession. So the whole purpose of the sacrament was for us to confess our sins. Absolution, so the forgiveness of our sins, happened before we repented. So we said we were sorry, but we didn't do penance yet we were already forgiven. Our sins were already absolved. So the priest kind of became like the judge. How we went to confession was very much, what were your sins? How many were your sins? How, what kind were they? So when I went to confession, at nine years old, it was, I lied four times. I hit my brother three times. Um, you know, uh, I cheated twice. Like you had to know specifically <laughs> what you did. No wonder why, you know, you were full of sweat before you even walked into the confessional. Um, so the right and ideas of private sacrament of penance remain unchanged from the 15th century through the Council of Trent to the Second Vatican Council. So it's all private. Vatican II comes along and now in studying the history returns back to the communal nature of the sacrament and what was confession goes back to being reconciliation. It's more about reconciling ourselves to God 
um, it reinstates the sacrament through those rites and settings. And again, it's not so much, it's not so much the laundry list, but as Justine said before, right, the dialogue. It's a dialogue of what needs to change in your life to reconcile your heart with God. So now I will show you. We're going to just see a quick little video. Why do Catholics confess their sins to a priest? Don't know? It's okay. A lot of Catholics and non-Catholics don't know the answer to this one. And as a result, almost half of Sunday Mass Catholics go to confession less than once a year. For some reason, this incredible gift that Christ gave to his church is going unused, like a present that never gets unwrapped. To see why you can't wait any longer for your free gift, let's start at the beginning. First, I want to tell you that what people call confession, the church usually calls reconciliation because it's not about reporting to the principal's office. It's about repairing a damaged relationship with our closest friend, Jesus. You might already know that nobody's perfect, but we're trying to grow in holiness because God said, be holy as I am holy. But try as we might, none of us will ever be so perfect that we can just climb up to heaven on our own steam. In fact, St. Paul even says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But there's good news. Fortunately, Jesus came to forgive our sins and save the world. God sent his only son Jesus to take on the penalty of all our sins so that we wouldn't be separated from God forever because God loves us too much to give us up without a fight. By paying the price for all of our shortcomings, Jesus was able to forgive us and heal us completely. And not because we deserve it. God's forgiveness is totally free. All we have to do is say yes. And one of the ways that we say yes to Jesus' free gift of forgiveness is by confessing our sins to each other. He wants us praying for each other because the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. Okay. I know what you're thinking. Does that mean we should just confess our sins to anybody? Why do we have to confess our sins to a priest? Let's see what Jesus wanted. In John chapter 20, verse 23, Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit onto the apostles. Then, after they're inspired by the Holy Spirit, Jesus tells them, If you forgive anyone's sins, those sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Whoa! The apostles could forgive anyone's sins so that, quote, those sins are forgiven. Wait, 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 wait. The apostles are forgiving sins now? Remember when the Pharisees got all upset when Jesus said he could forgive sins? The Pharisees thought that Jesus didn't have the authority to do that because who can forgive sins but God alone? But we know that Jesus can forgive sins because he happens to be God. So if the apostles were supposed to forgive anyone's sins, did they think they were little gods? Or some kind of mediator between God and mankind? No, definitely not. Because there's only one God, and there's only one mediator between God and mankind, and that's Jesus. But Jesus sent the apostles out into the world with his authority. He said, as the Father sent me, I am sending you. And each of those apostles passed on their authority as ministers and leaders appointed by Christ, on to other apostles. For example, one of the first things that the apostles did on their mission in the world was to replace Judas. They picked a guy named Matthias so they could, quote, let another take his place of leadership. End quote. St. Peter said that about Judas. He was quoting Psalm 109. So the gift that Christ gave his church through his apostles was handed down to the next generation of priests, and to every generation after that. 
In fact, St. Irenaeus in the 2nd century writes about this. Right down to the bishops and priests of today. I guess Christ was serious when he said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Reconciliation is one of the church's seven sacraments. In the Catholic Church, a sacrament is a direct grace hotline that Christ gave to his church, something that he expected the church to use, so that Christians could be closer to him. And in these sacraments, Christ gave the apostles his authority, but not his power to read hearts and minds. That's why the apostles' successors, our bishops and priests who assist them, have to hear our confession in order to do what Jesus commanded them to do, forgive anyone's sins, so that those sins are forgiven. And remember how Jesus told the apostles that sometimes they might not forgive sins? The apostles and their successors can't judge whether to forgive or not, unless they know the sins we want forgiveness for. And if the apostles' successors, our bishops and priests who assist them in their ministry, are inspired by the Holy Spirit and have been given the authority of Christ, and I want to be closer to Christ's ministry and presence? Well, I've got to ask you, why wouldn't I go to a priest for confession? So come on, it's not time to go to the principal's office. It's time to open Christ's free gift and get closer to Him. Okay. So, all right. Hey, hey there. Oh, because, sorry, the camp microphone was in my pocket. Um, so an important part that they don't explain in the video and the importance in going to the sacrament on our part, right, is hearing the words out loud. If you have the opportunity, child does something wrong. Well, maybe, maybe you've already done this. I used to do this all the time because I realized very early on my kids were much harder on themselves than I was. So if they did something wrong and they they would be waiting for the punishment, <laughs> I would turn the tables and say, what do you think? What do you think? What should your punishment be? And their punishment was always way worse than what I would have done. And we're kind of like that on ourselves. Think about this for a minute. I want you to think. What do you find easier to do? And I should have made this a poll and I forgot to. Is it easier to forgive someone or to ask for forgiveness? Ask for forgiveness because I'm a big grudge holder. So okay. I have a really hard time forgiving. All right. But okay. <laughs> but then all right. So now let's take it at uh, least for me personally, okay, but I know that's no, something no, no. I need to work that's, on. That, that's 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 good. <laughs> okay. But now thinking about that though, asking so asking for forgiveness and knowing how hard it is for you to forgive. Do you find it easier to forgive someone else or forgive yourself? Forgive someone else again. <laughs> I have a hard time forgiving myself. <laughs> I'm very hard on myself. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> but I'm also very unforgiving sometimes. No, but that's <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Even knowing, so even knowing how difficult it is to forgive someone else, especially if you're a grudger, if you hold that grudge, 
to find it harder to forgive yourself? Because I know when I go to the sacrament, when I am really troubled, and I've brought some heavy stuff to the sacrament, I have a really hard time to, to let go of the dwelling on what I brought to the sacrament afterwards. Which means that somehow I think I am, I hold more power. I matter more than than God. If God has already forgiven me, then I need to forgive myself. And we have a really hard time doing that. We have a really hard time sometimes when we are hurt forgiving that other person but remember at the beginning of the meeting right anything that keeps you from being pure of heart and being a hundred percent receptive of god's love are the things to bring to the sacrament of reconciliation. It doesn't always have to be what you've done. Sometimes it could be what's been done to you that you can't forgive. So we have to shift our perspective on what we think the sacrament is about. The sacrament is about receiving God's love. It was instituted by Jesus so that we could get closer to God. So we as parents and educators, right, we have to approach the sacrament in a positive and loving way. Because how we view the sacrament is how our kids are going to view the sacrament. If we're nervous about the sacrament, our kids are going to pick up on that and they're going to be nervous about it. Probably the most important thing you could do, like, quite frankly, the way we do reconciliation, and if we had, you know, if I had 20 priests available each night and time wasn't a consideration, your kids would not be receiving the sacrament first. I would have you guys receive the sacrament first so that your kids could watch you go up there. I tell the parents, if you have the opportunity, if time allows, like there, there were a not good handful of parents last year that stayed back at the end and and then went to to the sacrament, even if you go up and just say, I'm just here for a blessing. I'm not ready yet. Here for a blessing. I just want my kid to see me here. It's it's okay. We want right, we want to give our children as much confidence as they're going into the sacrament. And we're going to see in a, in, in, in a minute um, a video of a child preparing for um, their first reconciliation. I have in the chat, in, in, in the chat room, if you look on the bottom of your Zoom thing and you click on chat, I have five handouts. Um, one, two, three. Actually, I have six handouts. Five ways to prepare your children for for reconciliation 10 steps for going to reconciliation what you know the actual steps of going um and then like an examination of conscience we need to examine our conscience so we know what to bring 
to the sacrament. There's different ways you could do it. You could do it based on the Ten Commandments. You could do it based on the Beatitudes. You could do it based on the Lord's Prayer. Um, but have your children start looking and trust me, the priests don't want them coming with a laundry list. And I giggle because there's always one or two kids that's every year that pull out from their pocket <laughs> their their list. One or two, that's all you want to just get them. Bring one or two things. Because quite frankly, unless one of your children are knocking off this local 7-Eleven, I don't think any of them have committed a sin. Because it's important to know, right? For something to be a sin, you have to fully understand that it is an act against God. It has to be done freely and willingly. Next Tuesday, Tuesday night on the 16th, we have a, a workshop in the church. I'm going to go over the sacrament with the kids. And we're going to play. Is it a sin? Is it a sin? Or is it an accident? Or is it a mistake? At seven years old, they're confessing age-appropriate behaviors. But the reason why we do it is because we want them to be comfortable. Like if you go to the sacrament on a night that it's easy, when these priests know it's been years and years and years since you went, the next time you go, it hasn't been that long. The more you go, the easier it is. When you go, when you don't have a lot of the heaviness on, on your heart, the easier it is to go when you do. So we want we want to prepare them. So let me just let me show you a quick little quick video on first reconciliation. Hello, boys and girls. This is Father Ed. I'm sure you're very excited and looking forward to the celebration of your first confession very soon. I just want you to be relaxed. Don't be nervous. Don't be upset. It's an encounter with Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who loves you very much, who wants to forgive us of our sins. So you are coming to Jesus, and the priest is the minister to convey Jesus' forgiveness for you. Before we go to confession, we should examine our conscience to, think, to see what is it we want to bring before the Lord that we ask his forgiveness? What sins that are keeping us from loving God and one another? What we're going to do today is do a practice confession with some practice sins. So I want you just to pay attention and to see how we celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation. Now I'm going to go to confession, but first, I'm going to examine my conscience. I'm going to think about all the sins to tell Father. I'm going to use this book to help me. On Tuesday night, I'll have an examination of conscience for you guys. A very special day, a very happy day for you as you as we celebrate your first confession. I'm sure you're very excited. Huh? Yes, okay. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now notice she's making the sign of the yes, cross. Father, how I have sinned, and this is my first confession, and these are my sins. I have I fought with my brother and sister. I was disrespectful to my parents, and I took something that was not mine. Mm -hmm. For these sins, I'm truly sorry. We just celebrated Christmas, and we know that Jesus was born into a family. His parents were Joseph and Mary. He loved them, he respected them, he helped them 
you know, and Jesus shows us of how we are to live in the family, how to get along with one another, to be good to one another, to be kind to one another, to love one another. So Jesus wants us to live as a holy family also. So now we're going to try to go back to your family and, and really be grateful for them and to help them and be good to them and always be grateful to God for the family he has given to you. So for your penance when you go back, I'm going to ask you to say one Our Father and one Hail Mary for your family, family that God has blessed you with and the family that we belong to as the church, okay? Now tell Jesus you are sorry for your sins and say your act of contrition. Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended you, and I detest this is not all the one my that sins means, because of your just punishments. But most of all, because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love, I firmly resolve, with the help of your grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Amen. Now listen to the words of Jesus' forgiveness. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace, Karina, and I absolve you of all your sins, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus has forgiven you. Go in his peace. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Welcome, Karina. So, first and most important thing, we will say the act of contrition before the children go up. So it does not need to be memorized. They will have the prayers in front of them. The way we do it is you guys are going to come in you're going to find your name on a pew. There'll be big hearts with their names on it. So if you are not coming to your assigned night, you need to let us know so that we make sure that we have your child's heart ready. So you guys are going to come in. You'll get a program. You'll find your seat. We're going to have a really quick prayer service. So we get all our prayers taken care of before we come. We'll have a, a quick reading. Father Robert's going to talk to everybody. Um, he'll do a quick little homily. And then he'll take his seat. We usually have four or five priests. So it goes really quick. Don't be concerned about where you're seating in the church. Because it, it 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 goes it goes that quick. We haven't been, um. We've been under an hour, every year. So, um, it, it goes it goes quickly. They're gonna go, to whatever the first available priest is. They'll be escorted, to they'll be guided to, um, the priest. The first thing they do is make the sign of the cross. You have to practice with them face to face because I know, because I've been teaching second grade now for the past three years. I know all of my kids in my class know the sign of the cross because we do it all the time. I watch kid after kid after kid of mine sit down in that chair and make the sign of the cross the wrong way. Because what happens is, as they're making the sign of the cross, so is the priest. And they end up following the priest. I don't care if your children, I'm not gonna be, I, won't, I, I was gonna say a really bad sin. I don't care. <laughs> If your children tell them that they disrespect you and everybody in their universe, the priest is going to say at the end of the night, those kids didn't know how to make the sign of the cross. 
because quite frankly, that's all they're allowed to talk about. They're never going to mention what your kids say because as soon as your kids say it, they forget it. It's on to the next person. But the, every single year they say, those kids didn't know how to make the sign of the cross. So practice, 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 practice. Up, down, over and back, over and back, over and back so that it's it's cute when they do it wrong, but it's wrong. So if anything, that honestly, 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 the sign of the cross and saying they're sorry. So they're going to start off with the, the, the sign of the cross. It doesn't even matter if they say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Start off with the sign of the cross. They're going to bring whatever they're going to bring to the sacrament. And the priest is just going to have a discussion with them. Then the priest will absolve them of their sins. And again, they're going to make the sign of the cross. So the three things, sign of the cross, say your sin, say you're sorry for your sins, and end with the sign of the cross. Everything else will be done before him. The, the act of contrition will be said before they go up. So their contrition are the words, I'm sorry. When they're done, they'll come off the altar. There's going to be two hearts, a big heart and a small heart. They're going to take the small heart. They're going to put it on a forgiveness tree. And then you leave. We don't have, we don't have a closing. So as soon as you're done, with the sacrament, you can leave. Now, this is something in 26 years, well, 23 when Father Robert got here. So in over 20 years, I'd never seen this before. Father Robert wants you to, this is a sacrament. This is a special family sacrament. He encourages you to take pictures. Now, so you could take pictures from your seat. You, you can't run up and take a, a picture, and you certainly can't be within earshot, right? Because the sacrament of reconciliation is a sacrament of anonymity. So what is said is said between the penitent and the priest. So everyone has to stay back. So that's why you can't go up with your child. We don't even let them stay. They're not even close enough where they could hear. They could hear each other. Um, and then that's it. So you want to take pictures in your pew, in front of the tree. You know, as a, you're, in, you're encouraged to do so. Because um, we want the kids to know, right? It's an evening of grace. It's an evening of love um, and an evening of forgiveness. And then when they're, when they're done, you know, that's it. Now, this year, because Easter is so early and we're still having communions in May and there's winter break and Easter break and all that, it was hard to move the sacrament closer to first communion. But like we're doing it pretty early. If your child needs the sacrament again before communion, don't, you know, don't hesitate to come again as a family, especially because we're doing it before Lent. Um, you know, as a as a community, Lent in, Lent is always our season of 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 penance and fasting and um always a good time to to go to the sacrament so and again they've already gone so it'll be easy for them to go um a second time so whatever your family tradition is 
um, you know, take take advantage, take advantage of the way the calendar is this year uh, for the sacrament. Outside of that, that's it. We'll go over, like I said, we're going to go over all of this again um, on Tuesday. I encourage you, please, let's hope that the weather is good. I saw it's supposed to snow. Um, but it's good for the kids to to be able to see, to take away some of their apprehension. It's a sacrament of love. So I'm going to leave on this. It's a sacrament of love. I don't want them to be scared or apprehensive or anxious about it. If your child is, please call me or email me um, so I can work with you guys. You don't have to do it um, in January or February. We could push it off closer to communion time if we have to. We can make other arrangements if we have to. I don't ever want it to be a bad experience for them or for you. It truly, truly is a wonderful sacrament. I promise you, if you go, it will change your life. Even if it's only for that night and it goes out the window by the time you get to the car. But in those, in those few minutes afterwards, you will truly feel God's presence in your life. Um, so that's all I have. I am going to, um, I absolutely will. I just got a message. If I will email the details for, for, for Tuesday, I will. I'll send out another email. Um, I'll also send out a, a link to this, to this video. Um, all the, the handouts that I have tonight, I will also have again on Tuesday, so you can have a hard copy if you need. I will stick around and answer any questions that you have. If not, I will see you um, on Tuesday. I look forward to I look forward to the sacrament with with the kids. The kids are I just want to say the kids are so excited afterwards. They really are like they they get it. And they're very proud of themselves, um, as we should be for them. So 